Hi guys, it's Unders, and today we are going to look at importing audio into Logic and having it sync with your project. Now if you like this sort of video, they're helpful to you, or you've been watching some of my others, please subscribe to the channel, pop a like on the video, it does help me out massively with creating more content. Now, when would this be useful is if you're working on a project with someone, or you're working in different doors or someone is sending you a project to mix or you're sending a project out to be mixed so it's really great when i get some stems import them into logic and it asks do you want to import tempo do you want to want to import audio markers say yes to both of those things and the project's then laid out as i need it to be which is great that's exactly what we need equally you might have just got a bit of audio you want to put it in your project perhaps an acapella and you want it to work in your project now it might be slightly out of time and things like that you can detect the time and get it to work within your project equally we can use these things to make an effect and manipulate sound in different ways we're going to have a look at what we can do with it here so if you've just got a blank project set to the default tempo we're going to grab an audio file and i've got one of my housey type tunes here now this had the tempo embedded into it so in this case we're gonna don't import fab and it's a little self master test so don't judge me on the fact it is just completely crushed now i happen to know that this track was done at 123 bpm I put a 16 bar intro, so I've just cut it off at the first kick there, and if we bump it up to 123, fab, we get a nice little 16 bar intro there. We can have a quick listen. Fab, so pulsing, lots of risers, fairly standard intro sort of thing going on there. Now what's interesting about it is it's got transients and it's on time, but Logic's going to struggle to detect this, and I know that's going to happen. We've already had a look at it. It works a lot better if we've got a solid sort of time. So if you've got a, a, a bit of a house track and it's going bang on the, f the fours, it will get that bang on. Drum and bass, it tends to get it in half time. You see a lot of like 87 BPMs for 174. In this case, it's just going to be off by a couple of BPM, and we're going to have a look at how we can fix that. So... If we make sure this region is selected, so it goes white when it's selected, we can then go into Edit, Tempo, and we're going to do Detect Tempo of Selected Region. Boom. Like I said, it's got it wrong. Wrong by 2.5 or 2.4 BPM. Okay. And we're going to OK that because as far as we know, yeah, that's probably right. We're going to have a look here. If we zoom in, go right towards the end, it's just come off the markers a little bit. There's a couple of ways that we can fix it. We can go to the bottom right hand corner here. If you click Alt, your icon's going to change, and that's going to be a stretch marker. If you just click that along the one beat, we'll give it a little second to process. Okay, and we'll see that everything's pretty much bang on. I think it's because we've still got that little bit of the kick there. Let's just get rid of that. That's much better. Okay, so bang on the transients. It's bang on. It's back at 123. Ah, okay. I can see partly why that happened here. So we're a little bit off on where it should have hit. And that was my bad when I've imported it. Where are we right by that kick? We are. Anyway, all that aside, we're going to undo that, undo that, and undo that. That should be... There we go, it's off again. Okay. And what we're going to do here is put on flex time. So, up in the top here, you've got like your automation lane, flex time. We're going to put flex time on, and it appears down here. We can turn it on for this track. I've had a little play. It auto selects polyphonic for most sounds. Uh, it will sometimes select slicing and things for beats. Rhythmic's working best on here with what we've got. And now we can do similar to what we did before. 
except we don't have to hold oh it's automatically up the top going to be the stretch and that's going to snap in so now if we play it back at 123 bump it down and it still plays within the same 16 bar section affecting the sound quite a bit but it's still playing within time now if we undo the things that we've done here previously we go right back to scratch before we even detected the tempo if we adjust the tempo now see the audio moves it doesn't really stay with the project it's all over the place but once we had detected the tempo no, I can't redo really okay once we had detected the tempo we were able to move it and have it work within that same time frame regardless of what was going on where I was talking about you can get some crazy effects and uh, I've used this before to make baseline sounds if we go right down to about 5 BPM it's gonna really grab onto grains of this sound you can get some really trippy time stretch effects and this is on something that I've made so they're, they're effectively another way of making my own complete samples and you can almost grab single cycles out of the audio and just use them you just bounce this region out if you're using something like Serum you can then import these cycles in Just uh, have fun with it. If you want, you could completely restretch this. And then let's put it into, say, A7. So that is how to anchor audio to the BPM and import it and the useful things you can do with it syncing in tempo as well as create very strange effects. See you next time.